Welcome and thank you for attending the presentation of our paper, Deep Learning Based Bias Infer for Overcoming Laboratory Differences of Microscopic Images. My name is Anka Tante Bille. I am a research assistant at the Institute of Medical Systems Biology, which belongs to the Center for Biomedical AI called Biome at the University Medical Center Hamburg Eppendorf in Germany. Today I have the honor of presenting you the results of my master's thesis and the subsequent research which led to this paper. Let's start with the motivation. As researchers working with medical images, this quote by Kohli Al probably resonates with you. Everyone participating in medical image evaluation with machine learning is data starved. This predicament leads to a number of issues. A lack of adequate amounts of data often requires using medical image data from multiple sources. However, every laboratory slightly varies, be it the type of microscope or staining process they use. This causes something called domain shift. This means that the same source tissue can lead to largely differing images, which can affect the generalizability of our medical image analysis. Our goal is to apply image analysis networks to images of other domains without a large drop in performance, while also avoiding manual annotations or retraining our networks. That's why we wanted to transform the images to the target domain on which our networks have been trained with the help of deep learning, which we call bias transfer. Our experiments revolved around two types of microscopic images, immunofluorescent kidney biopsies and agent E stained prostate biopsies. Here you can see example images of the two be transformed in the target domain for the kidney biopsies, which originate from different hospitals and have been imaged by differing microscopes. The target domain consists of 269 and the new domain consists of 375 images. For the prostate biopsies, on the other hand, we use a publicly available dataset as a to be transformed or new domain. Here the target domain consists of 2866 and a new domain of 886 images. This is an overview of our workflow. In A you can see the images from the new domains, which are downsampled, transformed and then upsampled again, before they are fed to the segmentation or classification networks. The segmentation network predicts two masks, one for the glomeruli, which are the filtering units of the kidney, and one for the glomeruli's podocytes, which are indicators for the healthiness of the kidney. The classification network predicts one Gleason score per image, which is a common score for prostate cancer. For the actual bias transfer, we tried three different network types, cycle gun, unit cycle gun, and fixed point gun combined with three additional losses. Cycle guns and unit cycle guns consist of four neural networks, two generators and two discriminators. For bias transfer, the generators have the task of transforming the input images to the other domain while keeping the content intact. The discriminators, in turn, have to tell real and fake images apart. In contrast to cycle guns, fixed point guns only use a single generator and discriminator. The generator uses the input image and the label of the target domain to transform images and the discriminator judges the authenticity and the domain the image belongs to. The training process is based on three losses. The adversarial loss is based on the game between the generators and the discriminators. The second loss is the cycle consistency loss. The transformed images are fed into the opposing generator and are then transformed back to the original domain. The loss measures the difference between the original and the cycle transformed images. The third standard loss is the identity loss, which punishes the generators for transforming images that already belong to the target domain. The difference between cycle gun and unit cycle gun simply lies in the generator architecture. Whereas the original cycle gun generator has a classic encoder decoder structure, the output of the encoding layers is copied to the decoding layers via skip connections for unit cycle guns. We added several additional losses to the training process to explicitly incorporate our transformation objectives. The first loss is the MSSSIM loss by Armanius et al, which calculates the multiscale structural similarity index between the original and the cycle transformed images. The goal of this loss is to reduce hallucination artifacts, meaning that no structures are added to or removed from the image during the transformation. The second loss is the additional identity loss, which is calculated exactly like the previously explained identity loss, but is added on top for only the first 20 training epochs. This loss has been introduced by the Bell AI to stabilize the training process and to achieve faster convergence. Finally, the structure loss proposed by Mai AI compares the local structures in the original and the transformed images, again, to reduce hallucination artifacts. In our experiments, we trained each network five times with different random seeds, and either on its own or in combination with the MSSSIM loss, the structure loss over the combination of the additional identity and the MSSSIM loss, which we call combined losses. We evaluated the transformation quality regarding three metrics. The first and most important one is content preservation. 
As we are dealing with medical images, not changing the image content is extremely important. We measured this by calculating the SSIM between the original and the transformed images. Secondly, we want a good adaptation to the target domain. This was measured by the FID between the target and transform domain, with the FID between the original domains as a baseline. Thirdly, we of course also care about the impact on the segmentation or classification results that stem from the transformation of our images. For the kidney biopsies, dye scores were calculated to measure the segmentation quality. For the classification of the prostate biopsies, we looked at the accuracy and macro F1 scores. Here you can see a visualization of the results for the kidney biopsies. Overall, the unit cycle GAN variations performed the best regarding the SSIM and FID scores. They also led to the best segmentation scores. Overall, unit cycle GAN trained with the combined losses led to the best results. It significantly improved the segmentation quality for the glomerular and podocytes without adding hallucination artifacts to the images. Additionally, SSIM and FID were good indicators here for the resulting segmentation quality. Now for the results of the prostate biopsies. Fixed point gamma structure loss led to the best SSIM and FID results. However, a clear connection between the classification and transformation quality could not be established. Other variations achieved the highest accuracies and F1 scores. However, if we investigate the transformed images, the results indicated that the SSIM and FID scores are confirmed. While cycle gamma with combined losses led to the best classification scores, Fixed point gamma structure loss was a variation that continuously led to artifact free images and the transformation improved the accuracies and F1 scores, which is why we deemed it as the best variation. There are several conclusions that we can draw from these findings. Firstly, the additional losses help with improving the generation of artifact free images, but they need to be weighed carefully to enable a stable training process. Secondly, the transformation quality reflected the resulting segmentation improvement well, however it did not reflect the classification results, which is why selecting a fitting approach for biosense where only based on downstream analysis is very dangerous, as hallucination artifacts could accidentally improve the classification scores. As a guideline for future research, we can recommend the combination of SSIM and FID for detecting high transformation quality. Additionally, fixed point guns are recommendable over unit cycle guns if many domains exist, or if the number of images is small, as only a single generator has to be trained for transforming between any number of domains and as all images are used to train a single network. These are my sources and thank you for listening. If you are interested in more details, please make sure to check out our paper.